Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, pleasure to debate uh, bladder preservation. So I, I've been given the uh, honor of giving the uh, case for multimodality uh, bladder cancer preservation. I'm a radiation oncologist at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. So conservative treatment with radiation therapy is widely used in oncology, but critical to acceptance is comparable survival to non-conservative approaches. Plus, if you're going to do it, you have to have a pretty high rate of bladder preservation. Otherwise, there's no real point. And the native bladder, the one that we do preserve, must have pretty good function when we're done. Again, otherwise, there would be no uh, reason to do this. This is um, um, a, a title and um, introduction from a very recent um, critical analysis review paper, uh, including a number of uh, distinguished co-authors. And um, the first sentence of the introduction reads, uh, radical cystectomy with pelvic lymph node dissection remains widely accepted as, quote, the gold standard treatment for muscle invasive bladder cancer. I'm not really sure what the gold standard is. This is a phrase I hear all the time when we're talking about radical cystectomy. Um, and I did find this article saying that the gold standard is the world's worst economic idea. So maybe um, the comparison uh, isn't always the best thing to do. But I do want to talk briefly about um, bladder uh, uh, cystectomy before I talk uh, about radiation therapy. This is from the current edition of Campbell's Urology. And if you look at the, the complications from an orthotopic neobladder in this summary format, um, under the late column, there um, it's relatively significant. Um, and they also, uh, there's a fair amount of, especially nighttime uh, urinary incontinence. And I'll look further at this in a second. This is a, a quality of life study after radical cystectomy performed by uh, investigators at the uh, University of Michigan. And if you look at the, uh, the urinary domain um, of the um, neobladder in the uh, upper right-hand corner, I'm not sure, oh, right here, um, 49, per 49 is a relatively uh, low score. Um, and if we look at this pie chart here, and oops, I apologize. And if we look here in the upper right-hand corner at the uh, cystectomy neobladder curve, there's a, a fair amount of black and gray suggesting a fair amount of leakage from a, um, a neobladder. So conservative therapy, what can we say about survival? It's honestly very difficult to compare radical cystectomy survival and bladder preservation survival, in part because in surgical papers, the pathologic stage is what's reported and in radiation oncology, splatter sparing papers, you have to report the clinical stage because there's no pathologic stage and there's plenty of opportunity for upstaging with pathology. Uh, very briefly, what I sometimes hear is that the radiation doesn't even add to anything and that it's the TUR that does most of the work and maybe chemotherapy adds. The SWAG group in the US tested that with a bladder preservation approach without radiation with this SWAG0219 study. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the bottom here, if patients got chemotherapy and then a TURBT, if they were clinically T0 after repeat TURBT, then they could either be observed or have an immediate cystectomy. So a complete response to TUR and chemotherapy, patients were given the option of no treatment. And um, these, this uh, kind of summarizes the results. And 34 patients had no residual disease after chemotherapy and TURBT on a repeat TURBT. And 10 of them had an immediate cystectomy. And six of those had residual disease. So in other words, even in the most favorable group, they were unable to provide bladder preservation with TUR and chemotherapy. This is the overall survival curve. Just keep this in mind. This is a clinically staged group. 70% were T2, and the overall survival was only about 50%. And their conclusion was that although the chemotherapy had a promising CT0 rate, the study failed to meet the primary objective as there was an unacceptably high rate of persistent cancer at, chemo at cystectomy in patients presumed to have T0. So what can, what can we say about bladder preservation? Does it work? There are several large published series. 
Um, here's an RTOG one, here's one from Germany, and here's one from Mass General in Boston. And if I kind of summarize the results, the five-year survival data is 50%, which was similar to that SWOG study. The five-year survival with an intact bladder was 40%, and of those who were alive, 80% had bladder preservation. So in my mind, these are um, sort of gold standard, so to speak, numbers of, uh, of what you get with bladder preservation. Good candidates include T2, no hydronephrosis. We have a little bit of data on what makes a person a better bladder, better bladder preservation candidate. Here's, I'm gonna try to address the overall survival question a little bit more. This is a series that was uh, presented by Princess Margaret, radiation oncologist. And if you look at the, um, the uh, black line, this is the overall survival in their series. This is patients treated with, some with radiation alone, some with chemo and radiation. And here's the SWOG randomized trial looking at neoadjuvant chemotherapy that was published in the New England Journal quite a number of years ago. And this, remember, these were clinically staged patients, so it's one of the few series I can use for comparison's sake. And if I put the Princess Margaret curve on top in a non-statistical way, the uh, comparison for survival suggests that they're uh, similar when clinically staged. Uh, this was a recent uh, New England Journal publication from the UK looking at whether neoadjuvant, uh, whether concurrent chemotherapy matters. And chemo radiation therapy improves local regional disease uh, free survival, um, invasive disease free survival, and, uh, and overall survival, there's a strong trend towards an improvement. And again, I, I point this, put this up mostly not to talk about this particular study, but to look at the overall survival curve at about 50% for the chemo radiotherapy group, which would be considered standard for bladder preservation. Here's an RTOG study that, um, in the interest of time, I'll just show the overall survival curve that, if anything, this is over 50% at five years. And um, um, so um, my bladder, sur the survival with bladder preservation in general seems to be pretty good. Now there are a couple of issues. One is the issue of superficial recurrences. This is relatively common afterwards. But this study suggests that whether you get a superficial recurrence or not, it has no impact on your overall survival. Um, is bladder preservation, does it result in a tolerable bladder? I suggested that that was important. Uh, salvage cystectomy for poor function is very rare. It's probably 1% or less. Male sexual function after radiation is probably better than for surgically treated patients. Uh, toxicity from a, a, a recently published review of a large number of RTOG um, studies suggests that it's relatively uncommon. And so in general, bladder preservation provides local control for a relatively radio-resistant tumor Survival is similar to surgically managed patients. Bladder function is good. Requires a multimodal team, as we heard uh, earlier. Radiation plus platinum is important for bladder preservation, although mitomycin 5-FU from the BC 2001 study is a good alternative for men who can't, for patients who can't tolerate cisplatin. And RTOG trial data is a good source for different chemotherapy combinations. Adjuvant chemotherapy, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we don't really know. We know that chem the concurrent chemotherapy is important. Um, these other questions, I think, are still up for future uh, analysis. Uh, thanks for your attention, and I look forward to the other half of the debate. George Tallman will present the argument against bladder preservation. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I would make, like to make the case against. Oops, I'm sorry, let's uh, escape. Which is the ideal case for conservative treatment? Is it this tumor with a five centimeter diameter? Is it this more diffuse tumor? And you agree with me that this probably 
together with this patient, are poor candidates for bladder preservation. And that's I mean, the main point. If you look at the guidelines, the European guidelines say multimodality treatment is an alternative in selected, well-informed and compliant patients for whom cystectomy is not considered for clinical or personal reasons. However, for cystectomy is recommended for the majority of tumors and high-risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. The grade of recommendation is B in both cases, so they seem to be adequate. One of the problems we will find with bladder preservation is that already in the ideal cases that we have who will undergo maybe conservative treatment, we have a fair amount of positive lymph nodes in this population, and this is not often covered by the radiotherapy. The other is the staging error. We're looking at clinical comparison of the clinical stage and pathological stage, but just in T, T1 tumors, you see there's a fair amount of upgrading and upstaging in these patients, and that is always a problem when we look at these different populations. The TUR has an impact. That, is without, that goes without saying. If it is well done, as in this study by Harry Herr, then in these locally confined tumors, if you do a good TUR, the results will be comparable to cystectomy. So this is important, and also the bladder preservation based on TUR alone is very good. In the study by Harry Herr, you see that three quarters of the patients were alive, and more than half of them were alive with the bladder. However, a fair amount of patients undergo surgery, salvage cystectomy for recurrence. And so he com concludes that whatever we do with, with TRBT alone, the bladder remains at risk for new invasive tumors, and cystectomy salvages the majority, but not all, of relapsing tumors. And this risk is in the range of 18 to 60 percent that they will progress and may eventually die of disease. So the TRBT, well done, is a point. Does adding radiotherapy make a difference? This group proposes yes, that it does, is comparable. And if you look at these two populations, you see half, almost half of the patients have more advanced disease, and the overall survival in these group, this group of patients is moderate. If we take now our burn series of under patients with the same uh, tumor stage distribution. And this is not to show that we are better or we do something better. The point here is that this difference here has also an impact. This is our different populations that we're looking at. Probably this group of patients is elderly that have been treated. We know that in the English healthcare system, patients often had to wait very long until a couple of years ago for treatment. So we're looking and we're comparing different series and I think that is a problem and dangerous when we do that. In this review, uh, Kozak and colleagues came to the conclusion that uh, definite therapy, radiotherapy continues to be used very infrequently, although patients who undergo surgery fare better, I would like to say, then why bother? But that's not fair, and I think we have to go through it. Here, the air lung in series, clearly the R0 resection is very important. Then, if you can resect it, the patient will do well. If you have a poor resection, then he will do poorly at five years. And if you look at the patients who recur at a relapse after complete response initially, they fare more or less well. But those who did not respond to the intra model treatment or the dual model treatment, they fare poorly. And that is a problem in these populations because in bladder cancer, you have one hit and one shot. They concluded, based on that study, that the ideal candidates are those with early stage unifocal tumors in whom a complete TUR is accomplished. So they went on and did a better case selection, and half of the patients were T1, half of the patients were T2, 99 patients. And if you look at the local recurrences in these patients, then one in four patients had a recurrence. And in my mind, that is too much for this potentially curable disease. Survival, if you look at this in these patients' groups, then this is hardly better than we have in unselected patient groups in, from the Houghton group or ours. Nick James proposed a trial, and they looked at again at about 100 patients, uh, 400 patients, sorry, 360 went under, underwent randomization, 
These were 458 patients, 43 centers in a seven years collection or a, a recruitment period. There must be some kind of selection, be it poor, be it good, in these patients for survival. That makes less than 10 patients per group per recruitment period. So we're looking again at a population that might have been selected. And if you look at the recurrence rates, yes, they improve at five years, and the recurrence free survival is not bad. If you overlay again our population, uh, it's not that much better. Probably the surgical series are better. If you look at survival, it's again not to show. I think we're looking at different populations. Maybe not everybody will be solved with chemoradiotherapy. And the problem in this population was that they were doing very well. These were uh, performance scores 64%, zero. Performance score one, 33%. I think we have to bear in mind what we're comparing. Uh, for sake of time, Dr. Sandler already showed this data. But I think I want to point out that also in this series, it's very important that a complete TRB was important to predict a good response. And also, if they responded well to treatment, they did well. But what if you do not respond well? Then you've had your chance. So we're looking at these four studies that are combined. The disease fee for survival is not overwhelming, but it's not that bad. But again, we're maybe looking at different populations. Local control rate. I think we're doing better with radical surgery. If you look at the organ confined and the non-organ confined tumors in the Houtman series or in our series, we had very little local recurrences. And I think those at least are out because they impair quality of life. And that's the main issue. What does the patient want? What's little morbidity, wants tumor free? We know that surgery is morbid, that will not be debated. But if you have a chance of being tumor free, if well done and re re operated on early, you may have good functional results, even despite age. And uh, you could have good quality of life. And if you can operate the patient early, you can do nerve sparing, you can preserve the rat sphincter, you can do nerve sparing in both and do an uh, orthotopic uh, derivation, then you may have a good chance. After trimodal therapy, you will not be able to envision a bladder substitute. The results are poor. So overall, synchronous radiocarbon therapy is safe. It's an option. Bladder preservation with trimodal therapy is a valid alternative in select patients not fit or not willing to undergo surgery. There is a strong doubt that results of primary bladder preservation with salvage cystectomy can be compared to results of primary cystectomy with lymph node dissection, as I showed you, because we're looking at them mostly at different populations. And a lifelong closer follow-up for bladder preservation and prompt salvage cystectomy are mandatory if you undergo uh, bladder preservation. Delay of radical cystectomy is clearly associated with the decreased cancer-specific survival in some of the patients, and I think that we have to bear in mind that we have only one shot. An open radical cystectomy with extended pelvic lymph node dissection is the standard of care in the treatment of muscle invasive bladder cancer. So, thank you for your attention.